Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on CCIE Wireless V2. In this video, I would like to show you how to configure basic IPv6 supports on the controller-based solution. I am using code 7MR1 on the controller, which is 70116, and on this code, support for IPv6 is pretty limited. What you can do is what they call bridging. Uh, before going there, uh, let me show you my topology and uh, how we're going to work here. So I have an access point connecting to a controller. Uh, between the controller and a router, I have a, a trunk going through a switch. And this router is going to be my IPv6 DHCP server. It's going to support IPv6. Everything IPv4 is going to be done on the switch so that it doesn't disturb us. Then I have a wireless client which is going to try to test this uh, topology. So the first thing I would like to show you is how to enable IPv6 support on that router. So it's a and your router that runs enterprise or advanced enterprise a code is going to support IPv6. So the first thing you want to do is go to ConfT and enable IPv6 support, which is going done by doing IPv6 unicast routing. Then this router connects to um, the switch via an interface F00, and because it's a trunk, I have sub-interfaces there. So what I would like to do is to configure sub-interfaces in IPv6 for that router, and each of these uh, interfaces is going to have an IPv6 address. So I'm going interface F00.6 to configure the first one. Uh, because that's supposed to be in VLAN 6, I'm going to say that it's uh, encapsulation.1q VLAN 6. And I'm going to give it an IP address, IPv6, which has to come an IPv6 address. And the address I'm going to use is the FC00 slash 7, which is called the unique local address uh, type of address, which is a, a private, you know, equivalent 10 slash 0, 172, 216, 19216, this kind of address in IPv4. Um, that's the, the private address. So FC0 for this one, 6 to create a subnet, and then I'm going to give uh, the extension 15 to that router in that subnet. So FC06 is the subnet, and 15 is the host in that subnet, and it's a slash 64 subnet. I'm going to do the same uh, thing for interface in VLAN 9, so it's going to be a uh, sub interface 9. It's going to be trunking and capsulation the one q in VLAN 9, and its IP address is going to be pretty much the same structure um, in subnet FC09. Same logic for VLAN 10. FC010. Next step on this router is to configure a DHCP scope for each of those subnets. Uh, this is done in a very similar way as to IPv4 as far as creating the um, scope is concerned, but the options within the scopes are a bit different. So I'm going to say IPv6 DHCP pool uh, VLAN 6 to start for the first one, and here the option is a bit different. Instead, instead of sending the uh, network and the default gateway, you are going to send simply the address prefix, and you are going to say that it's uh, FC06 0 slash 64. You don't need to send a gateway because the router itself is going to announce itself as a gateway. So same logic for VLAN 9. I just send a prefix which is going to be 9 and same logic for VLAN 10 sending the prefix which is going to be 10. Alright, so this is done. The last step I need to do here, and that's different from IPv4, I need to go back to my interfaces and I need to call uh, the DHCP pool from those interfaces. Basically, if you don't call the pool from the interface, the router is not going to assign the IP addresses to those interfaces. And that's very powerful in IPv6 because you can have different interfaces in the same subnets and only provide IP addresses on some of them. So I go back to F00.6 and I call IPv6 DHCP server and the name of my scope for that subnet is VLAN 6. Same logic for 9, I'm going to call the scope that I called VLAN 9. So remember that's the name of the scope I created, okay? And VLAN 10, I'm going to call the scope that I called VLAN 10. Okay, at this point my router is ready. Let's try to connect a client. So on my controller here I have a couple of WLANs, one is called main1.1 1 .1, and uh, it's sending people to VLAN 9, okay? There is no special option here, no special option configured. I have a client here, so let me try to connect to my main 1.1 and see if I can get any uh, IP address in IPv6. And as soon as I'm connected, I can go here to status and check the details of my connection. And you see I have an IPv6 address, which is FC09, so that's the IPv6 
address I configured on my router, so it's working perfectly fine. So wait a minute, I said I didn't configure anything on the controller, and in fact, the IPv6 support on the controller is done here. Uh, there is something which is called IPv6 enable here in the advanced tab of the WLAN and you see I have nothing checked here so nothing is configured and yet I get an IP address uh, in IPv6 in that WLAN why is that? well that's back to my slide here um, IPv6 bridging it's first it's only bridging so here my client is in VLAN 9 by default uh, because that's where I'm sending my client so my requests are going to go in VLAN 9 so that's bridging I'll come back on that um, it occurs after layer 2 authentication as you see here on the first line uh, this means that here there is no authentication so it occurs very easily and then every uh, IPv6 query is being sent in VLAN 9 just because the client is authenticated at layer 2 uh, that would work for open authentication, it will also work for WPA, WPA2 or web, you know, with or without .1x anything which is a layer 2 authentication is going to work perfectly fine the same way it's a bit more complicated when you use a web authentication WLAN and the, the uh, checkbox I showed you before here is in fact for those web authentication based WLAN so let me show you what's going on here, I have another one uh, which is a web authentication based WLAN here it's also sending people to VLAN 9 as you can see and here I have checked the IPv6 support enable okay so let me try to go to my client and try to associate to that guest WLAN and see what happens layer 2 authentication occurs very fast because WebAuth doesn't require anything and if I go to status here and if I go to detail I have an IP address in 10.10.9 and I have an IP, IPv6 address in VLAN 9 as well alright so all is working perfectly well and that's because in fact here I check that box what if I uncheck that box click apply alright so it's unchecked now and let me go back to my clients and try to deauthenticate and reauthenticate see what happens I reconnect the same way and when I go to status here you see I don't have an IP v6 address okay I do have you know this FE80 address but that's a link local address that's something which is always generated when you have an IPv6 enable interface so it's not provided by my uh, router what does that mean well it means that for layer 3 web authentication based WLANs if you do not check IPv6 bridging IPv6 traffic is not allowed before the authentication occurs in other words my layer 2 authentication occurred I sent the HTTP request IPv6 the HTTP request and those were blocked by my controller the IPv4 requests were sent and that's why I got an IP address in VLAN 9 with IPv4 here but my IPv6 requests were blocked so I'm not getting an IP address whereas um, if you enable the feature on the controller like I did before when you authenticate layer 2 before layer 3 authentication your IPv6 requests are being sent properly by the controller okay to finalize this demo let me try to authenticate a layer 3 and see if I get an IP address once I authenticate a layer 3 so let me close that I'm still associated to the uh, guest WLAN let me try to go to the uh, web authentication page and see if I can get some I'm using the usual 1.1.1 .1 for my login uh, page and default credentials and it's working so I have a layer 3 authentication done now so if I go back to my clients and if I do IP config release then IP config renew and go back to my properties here you see that here I'm back to an IP address in, I, in VLAN 9 alright so in summary when you use a layer 2 authentication that is to say nothing or web or WPA2, WPA1 with or without the 1x or pre-SK um, IPv6 bridging occurs immediately after layer 2 authentication when you use a layer 3 authentication web auth if you do not check the option IPv6 support enable here in WLAN you don't have any IPv6 support before the layer 3 authentication occurs so you have layer 2 authentication IPv4 
IP address is given and then you need to authenticate via the web interface and then you can have an IPv6 address and it's bridged locally on the switch. If you check the option here then you have IPv6 support as soon as you have layer 2 authentication occur. So you have layer 2 authentication occur, IPv4 and IPv6 support are there immediately and then you can get your IP address before layer 3 authentication. This is valid for layer 3 authentication WLANs locally authenticated on your controller. So it doesn't work if you use any anchor tunneling of any sort. To show you here what I mean, if I go here, if I go to WebAuth and if I go to Mobility Anchors and I define an anchor, if I go back to my WLAN and I try to enable IPv6 support here, it's going to give me a weird message that basically doesn't mean much when you read it but basically it's, it tells me you cannot do that because IPv6 bridging on this code is not supported when you use tunneling to another device by the way roaming also is not supported so if I'm getting an IPv6 address layer 2, layer 3 authentication doesn't matter if I get an IPv6 address and I roam from one controller to the other I'm going to drop my IPv6 address because the controllers do not handle uh, IPv6 roaming in that version of the code so in summary, you would use this option only if you use a layer 3 authentication WLAN with the authentication being local on that controller, that is to say no anchoring, no tunneling to anything else. You don't need this option for uh, layer 2 authentication types like WPA, WPA2, etc. Uh, and IPv6, be careful, is only bridged on the controller. Uh, that is to say it's being dumped basically locally on the switch um, you cannot send that uh, traffic to something far uh, so not only no tunneling is supported etc so that's it for IPv6 I hope this was useful for you and I would like to thank you for watching